Shopify is going away, I'm afraid. Keynote, on the other hand, is going for maximum screen. So, good afternoon, everyone. It is Monday. It is our second week of online broadcasting. And if everything is going well, uh, some of you are looking at this after the fact because we can't stream simultaneously. Um, but we were able to um, have a Billy Billy account um, created and we put lecture 27 up. We're going to upload the rest. Uh, so one of our goals is as your circumstances continue to shift, uh, we're going to try to shift with you and we're going to try to adapt our technology uh, to suit where you are. All right, let's go. So today we're going to talk about a bunch of things. It's lecture 30. Uh, consultations, uh, you've seen the word and it's starting to take on a little bit more direct relevance to you, I think. Adaptations. And if we have time, uh, some stuff on parametrics. We ended last discussion lecture screencast talking about what to do if you have more free variables than you have information. And two things that came up. Well, let's see if anyone remembers on Mattermost. Anyone remember what the two things that came up last time were when we said, what do you do when you have more unknowns than equations? Let's see what Mattermost has to say. Currently, we have Robert and Mom in Mattermost, so hopefully more people will arrive as they can. Assumptions was one. Yep, so one thing you can do, uh, let's see if we can get, uh, oh, I need another device. I'm short devices. Gaussian elimination, perhaps. Um, I picked a device to annotate, but it's the wrong device. Figures. All right. So we pick up another device and we say, okay, so one of the things you can do in the case where you don't have enough information, scramble, scramble, is you can assume what was the other one? And they can't just be like random assumptions. They need to be like good assumptions. There was another one that came up. Let's see if it's in Mattermost as I launch something else. Uh, free variables, which is sort of what I'm talking about, I think. Um, so we're going to use the free variables idea. Or another way that I'm going to express it is, and I think they're equivalent, but I'm not the mathematician here, so hopefully one of you can help me. Uh, free variables or parametric solutions. So rather than your solution being exact, it's parametrized along some of the information that you're missing, the free variables that you've chosen. And ideally you choose the free variables that are actually under your control. And we'll talk about that a bit later. So, okay. So you remember a little bit from last discussion, which is awesome. Screen capture and let's move on. Hopefully you heard that. So just uh, keeping things uh, alive a little bit and showing what's going on. So my office space continues to evolve, as I'm sure yours does. Um, just a few key design features here. Uh, the reason that I have that, that pink, it's actually called plum background um, on my laptop or on my desktop is to remind me that I shouldn't surf all the time. So I thought that was kind of one thing that, to do. Um, I do have these beady little eyes watching me all the time, telling me to focus. And one of the things that we'll talk about a bit later, um, if you're struggling internally to maintain focus, you can use other things to actually help you with focus. Uh, it could be the beady little eyes of a stuffy, uh, could be a family member. Um, you may have, have family pets that are, are there. Uh, the key is something that helps you. But I also want to, to bring this back because I think it's quite important. We now have Kaktenstein von Kaktake. Uh, formerly didn't really have a name per se, now it does. Um, and I want to talk about the process by which that happened. Because what we did is we kind of made it a public thing. We said, okay, uh, those of you on Mattermost, why don't you take a look and uh, we'll vote. And some of you even were given the opportunity to create your own options. Yeah, I'm still struggling to move it around. So is this a good idea? 
is asking people and giving them sort of democratic power to assign names or to prioritize, or shall we say for them to pick their own assessment mechanisms, is this a good thing from the context of engineering design? Let's go digging. So we know that we have a name now, we know how it was arrived at, what happened. And so what I want to do is bring up uh, Bodie McBoatface. And again, this is a Wikipedia article, and I've already seen some comments saying, you know, as always, when do we Wikipedia, when do we not? Is this high school and, and realistically the answer is we use Wikipedia where we take on the, the ownership of its quality. So Bodie McBoatface was, as it says, an autonomous underwater vehicle uh, in the UK. And what I want to emphasize is this notion of how it was named. And it was, as it says, quickly a March 2016 online poll. Um, but this is the summary. And so up here it says further information. And I'm going to go dig through further information. And as we continue to emphasize research and investigation and digging, um, I'll admit there are times we look at the summary or we look at the synopsis or we look at the abstract, but we do try to dig in as well. And so we're going to do that right now. So this is the naming poll element. Uh, this is part of the, the overall Wikipedia page for that boat. And what do we know? So this the council who's responsible said that members of the public were being asked to suggest names for the ship. So it wasn't a vote on, on names that were provided. They were asking for both the suggestion and for the vote uh, on, on preferences. Now, What's interesting is the, this, this National Environment Research Council stated that they'd have final say. Just quick check. Okay. Um, and that the most popular name of the poll would not necessarily be the one used. So I want to put this out uh, to those who are listening live right now and ask you the following question. And remember, there's always a why. So is it authentic stakeholder consultation especially when done via poll. So they didn't just ask what names would you like and we'll pick one. They said, you know, we'd like you to suggest names and vote on them. So as, as designers, you're responsible for contacting and working with stakeholders. Do you feel and why that this idea of, oh, you can suggest a name and you can even vote on it, but no, yeah, we're gonna decide, is this authentic stakeholder consultation? So it is now 13, 17, 55. I will give you 90 seconds to ponder. Of course, subject to some delays here. So take your minute and a half. Is this authentic stakeholder consultation as you perceive it given your values as an engineering designer? So your values are critical. Go. I'm just going to rearrange some of the tech here. And let's see if this USB C port is still working. The answer is sort of. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got for responses. Is this an authentic stakeholder consultation? Um, they would have final say. That's literally how dictators run elections. I'm going to assume that when someone says that's how dictators run things, they do not feel that's authentic consultation. Some degree of oversight would be appropriate. Um, I think it also depends so this, the, the consultation to which stakeholders, uh, because in this particular case, it was an open internet poll, not British 
uh, citizens, not those who had paid for or would be paying for the the, the vessel, the uh, the underwater ROV. So, authenticity aside, we're not even sure that the, the the appropriate stakeholders were the ones being consulted. Oh, I think that's a really good point um, on accountability. In the sense, is this authentic? Well, if there's no accountability for it, then no, because authenticity requires a sense of accountability. Again, this is one of the, the, the comments from the class. Falsification. All right, let's move on because I want to see what actually did happen. So as it says, oh, uh, going to, to those who, who mentioned it wasn't you know necessarily secure, uh, apparently we had Spanish internet trolls. Um, I kind of like it. And again, the organizers removed the option, which garnered more than 38,000 votes. So it's one thing to say, as they did, we may not pick the one that gets the most votes. It's something else entirely to remove an option, especially one that for, you know, that may or may not, depending on technology, have received that many votes. Uh, okay, so based on the fact that they put a select committee of the House of Lords together, they want to review the process. So even though there was no obligation on the part of the government to follow the results, they still were not happy, comfortable, not sure what the language would be about the process and put a review forward. And I love this part. Uh, the directors of NERC felt it was a success, regardless of controversy, uh, because there was publicity and that meant that the public was now interested in what was happening uh, with respect to the organization. This is a personal opinion. I look at that and I'm like, you know, this notion that all publicity is good publicity may not hold. And my reason for feeling this way is any number of times I've been part of discussions, part of consultations, and I go back a day, a two, a day or two later, or a week later, and say, by the way, do you remember what we were actually asking you to, to provide input on? And they can't remember. They remember that there was Bodie McBoatface, and they remember that there was, you know, Blas de Lezo, but they don't actually remember that the point was in underwater submersible for marine exploration. So all publicity, good publicity, I don't necessarily buy it. So this takes me back to lecture 25, um, when we we're talking about stakeholders and stakeholder consultation and the, the sense that we have that many of you uh, at that time with respect to your RFPs were really wanting direct engagement with stakeholders uh, as to become your primary source of information, as opposed to, for example, doing some extra research, doing uh, going into secondary or tertiary sources, you were very, very much interested um, in that, in getting direct stakeholder in, um, interactions, acknowledging that, you know, perhaps they may already have, they have their assumptions, their vision, what can be, what ought to be, and they may not be able to overcome those. And so, as it says in the bottom there, your job as an engineer is to uh, help break through and understand these biases. And this also comes back, and there's no slide for this, to the relationship between the engineer, the client, the user. And we've really emphasized this idea that within this RFP process, and I will assert in the broader um, practice of engineering, this notion of engineer and client is one that doesn't really reflect a professional engineering. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the other thing we talked about with respect to understanding stakeholder needs, and this was three lectures before, um, is the notion of a variety of community members. So we talk about students all the time, but students are not a unified body, especially now that circumstances have changed. For us to say these are student needs may not necessarily hold. Similarly, how do we know what a community identity is? How do we work with it? How do we understand it? Um, we want to understand the identity, but in some senses, especially with respect to this concept called intersectionality, everyone combines multiple identities. And so the notion of the singular is actually quite problematic. And then we have adapting language and representations, which we're going to talk to in a little bit, um, which is especially challenging in an engineering realm or a technical realm where the language 
the technical language may actually be as much, if not more important than the community language. And so I'll put on the table that if you can translate, and we talked about that with respect to um, the holistic engineer, or sorry, holistic engineering education, that textbook a little while ago, this idea that if there's lots of people who can get the same answer, there's less people who can contextualize it. There's even fewer people who can interpret it in ways that stakeholders understand. And if you can be that interpreter, there's real value there. All right, so uh, consultations happen all the time. Uh, City of Toronto, this is from this morning, has lots of ways, as they say, that you can get involved in public consultations. And here is an interesting one. I'll just zoom in for simplicity. It's we want more inclusive community spaces in the city or the city is considering how inclusive its spaces are. Um, accessibility would therefore, I assume, already have been dealt with. And talks about we're gonna host town halls. Um, let's actually do a little bit of highlighting here. One second, there we go. Or hopefully there we go. Um, so the what are they for? They're in it for to listen, to better understand the community's needs, and then they give you the outcome, which is nice to know. Well, it will help to inform, so it won't be driving. It be um, the only thing. It's help to inform approach to improving permitting and room booking. So basically we're gonna to listen to you, try to understand your community's needs, acknowledging that the LGBTQ2S plus community is hugely varied. And just to reemphasize the term, um, the notion of, if we just look at that, the notion of intersectionality in this context is a huge one, intersectionality being the idea that we are the intersection, intersection of multiple communities and identities. Wow, it's a lot slower to write. Maybe this is why students say we cover more in praxis than in courses where they have to write stuff down identities. Okay, so this is a public consultation with respect to inclusivity. There was public consultations with respect to Waterfront Toronto. Uh, public consultations are happening all the time. We are also trying to understand your evolving circumstances. This is our one of our forms of public consultation right now. Um, this was yesterday, we had about 63 full, 75 total. So why we want to know the limits of your situation so that we can tailor our expectations, and our responses. Well, this was as of 1130 this morning. Uh, the good news is we're up. I would say the bad news from our perspective, trying to do a good stakeholder consultation is we're, we're currently at 36% of the class, acknowledging though that things continue to change a lot and the survey that we're asking you for may not be a priority, which is okay. Um, we're doing this because as we move forward and as Praxis plans what happens at between beta and handbook, uh, formerly known as showcase, and we'll see how that plays out. Um, we are trying to consult with as much of the class as possible, uh, putting consult with in quotes because we haven't really defined what that looks like. Um, and this is one of our means to do so. Uh, just as a quick point, um, also that lecture, the question came up about residents and about Corey. Uh, our understanding from Corey is that she hasn't heard yet from uh, many students. Uh, we just want to reemphasize that um, if your housing situation remains in flux, if there's still concerns that you're being asked to leave and don't have a place to go, uh, Corey continues to be there. All right, so this is another email that you got on March 20th and it's from the Dean. And as it says, you know, a bunch of different things. What's interesting is three things were bolded in this email. Uh, the thing at the bottom after they see their final grade, something off screen that says graduate students and will consult. 
And so since we're an engineering design course and you're been, you've been acting as student engineering designers, the notion of stakeholder consultation is one that seems to fit here. So this is now gonna go back out to Mattermost. We're gonna to try to capture as many as we can. Um, but remember with the dual, I want you to take a dual mentality as both students and student engineering designers, what are appropriate ways to consult with students as for example, in this case, course instructors determine what to do. So we're gonna take about say two minutes on this. It's now 13.31, uh, two minutes, appropriate ways to consult with you given your dual intersectional identity of student and student engineering designer with a reminder, how do we get our variety? How do we respect identity and how do we adapt? Go. I'll try to do some real-time capture. So someone mentioned anonymity. I'll put that with a question mark because they, I believe they said it could go either way. Um, open forums of discussion that permit criticism and suggest revisions. So I'm going to abstract that a little bit and say um, an appropriate way is one that allows iteration. That an appropriate way is one that um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say allows, I think I'm going to say um, supports, maybe that's not the right word critique asking for actual written opinions rather than just voting so um, I'll again I'll, I'll do I'll do my reason you can always tell me if you're not uh, comfortable with the rephrase um, requires some evidence of engagement. So this is me, and maybe this isn't gonna work, we'll find out, engagement. And I'll just tag it here, beyond yes, no. I think that's what's being referred to here. Uh, feedback discussion form, but doesn't require login. Um, so I'll go with a little emphasis here, anonymity, it's just a question mark. Um, not require login. So Mattermost, for example, would not count under those rules. Uh, professionalism is a big barrier, potential hazard for productive. All right, we have psychologically safe spaces. I can spell, really I can. Come on. So psychologically safe. Um, t -t 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 -t. The ability to make a case, we can say why we what we think. I love it. Um, let me just figure out how to capture that before I go on. I don't wanna lose it. Um, I'm gonna say it this way, supports argument slash justification not just claim. I think that's a really important one. Uh, my reactions to suggestions should be explained. Um, okay, that works. Uh, so arguments are not just claim. And I think if I'm reading that right, uh, including reactions. Uh, establish different scenarios and see how students fit. Um, 
So I I think if I if I read into that one. Uh, so okay, so two points. Uh, one, the notion of different contexts so, or different scenarios. Um, so the notion of multiple scenarios. Uh, versus this or nothing. Um, and da, 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 da. we'll deal with feasibility in a little bit. I think it's a good point. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to start to move on, but I wanted just a couple of points here on my reactions. Um, I'm always worried about anonymity um, because of, um, well, there's the greater internet dun, dun, that we talked about, uh, or I showed some of you. It's this idea that there does seem to be some evidence that pure anonymity is uh, problematic. What my happy place personally would be kind of you need a user ID to get in, but once you're in, there's um, once you get in, no one tracks. So it's the the big gate with freedom in between. Um, with respect to require some evidence of engagement. Um, so just a quick point on, on that one. So I'll, uh, this is from uh, Professor Sheridan who just gave me an audible. Um, we want to emphasize yes, no has been um, mandated or suggested. I'd have to double check the language. It's at the very least a should and it might be a must from the dean. So we are, our, our options there are a little bit limited. Um, I think argument justification, the comment that it should go both ways is true. Uh, so that should be bi-directional. Uh, we try to do that with you. Hopefully that works out. Um, and the other thing that I sort of reacted to is the notion of uh, psychologically safe. That's hard. Uh, and again, it's difficult because of intersectionality. Everyone's going to feel, or just difference, we don't even need intersectionality. Being psychologically safe is just not, designing a psychologically safe uh, situation or opportunity is quite tricky. Thank you so much for this, for what it's worth. We're going to be pushed, we're going to take all this, like you know how we work. We're taking this, we're including it in, in our work, but we're also sharing it with Professor Chong. I believe you're now aware of because of his work supporting you on EC159 and others. Okay, we're going to change the question to this. This is going to be another one that's going to take some time because for me, this is absolutely critical. So I'll give you sort of my, the explanation for this question. And I've attended some City of Toronto public consultations and I sat in the audience with my design instructor hat on because it wasn't my neighborhood. And I watched the interactions and, and so on. And I waited till it was over. And the people who were really engaged always stay after the consultation. And they were talking with the members of the city. And I asked them the question, basically this question, how would you, what would it take? What, what do you need to see? What evidence has there have to be for you to feel that you've actually been consulted? I will share their answer after you share yours. 13.39, two minutes, what does it take? This is as students, forget designer now. You're just, you're just you as a student. What is the evidence to feel you've been consulted? Two minutes, go. I would pay good karma for you to tell me what evidence it for you to feel consulted. Um, okay, I think I'm allowed to do this. Chase, can you just amplify that? Acknowledgement, yes. Can you give me a little more? What does that feel like? What is, you know, how do you, is it repeating back your words like I kind of just did?
All right, so please keep going. I'm going to do my, my, my capture the same way I did a few moments ago because I've got some more good stuff coming up. Uh, we pay good money. Acknowledge okay, so we have acknowledgement, but we want to figure out what exactly that is. Acknowledgement. So there's a number of angles to that one. Um, the reasons behind the decision. I think there's an amplification there that we'll talk about in a second. Uh, da, 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 da. When the solution addresses all the portion. So I'm gonna say direct link to um, students, students is, whoops, the next one there students is concerns or problems. Uh, where we go, where we go? Ah, move too fast. Um, whether advice was accepted. And again, I'm curious whether accepted or implemented, because that's important. Uh, examining points made, fair enough. Oh, okay, uh, I, I think, sorry, there's all sorts of good stuff here. Um, verification is the most received. Okay, uh, Evan, you would need to see. Um, some kind of numbers, e.g. Um, participants, etc. cetera. Uh, reply, okay. Um, Verification is the most received for me personally. Examining points. Da, 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 da. Okay. Is to actually see the action which seems to be influenced by us. Okay. I'm going to call it there because there's a bunch of, again, really good stuff here. Um, let me just scroll, see what else I'm missing. Uh, so some of the ways uh, of acknowledgement, um, and I think there's a bunch, I don't know if any of these are gonna work, but for example, um, in this instance, you know, I'm acknowledging your contributions because I've written them down. So perhaps recording, perhaps uh, restating, uh acknowledgement how uh means of acknowledgement means of acknowledgement help me out here we need, need means of acknowledgement um the reasons behind the decision i am totally in favor of and i know that me personally i have significant i'll call them trust issues that's probably overstating it towards authority who doesn't actually i don't i don't do ethos so good i need logos i need it bad um a direct link to students concerns and i think um it needs to be made explicit, is what I think you're saying. Uh, whether the advice accepted, I think some of the quantitative pieces. The the challenge, I think, very much. Um, yes, I'm a logos junkie. I'll admit it. I think that there's that sense of influence. I think there's that sense of, and it can be named. Uh, see the action with influences, and I'd say, identified. So for example, when we say we're now on Billy Billy, because some of you said it was hard to access our stuff, the because we've identified the influence as to why we're on Billy Billy. So a number of different things here. Um, I'll, uh, I'll go with this because I, I said I'd share. So, so there I was uh, at this consultation and uh, the person was done. And I said, okay, and how would you feel consulted? And the only thing they could say, the only thing they would buy was when I get what I want. They didn't want to feel that they'd influence. They didn't want to be a footnote in a report or a design document. They didn't want to be referenced as a stakeholder. They wanted their demands to be put in place and that was the only evidence they would accept of consultation. 
Uh, needless to say, the people at the city were, were not super happy about this because they're sitting here going, we can't pull that off. Okay. Um, Awesome stuff. Again, all of this is going to be fed into our process and it's going to be fed to Professor Chong, uh, Professor Kluett, and the associate chairs with respect to their process. So going back uh, to lecture 25, uh, Professor Sheridan, uh, apparently you had a really awesome discussion of The Simpsons and some of what was happening in that video. And I, I chose that screen cap where, where Homer um, comes in and, and just sort of says, okay, you eggheads. Um, and there's something I, I don't have anything prepped here, but I'm gonna do a quick little audible. Um, and I don't think we're gonna, we're not gonna follow up on it today because of time. Um, so I'm gonna leave this as a, currently it's a rhetorical question. What is the role responsibility? I'm not even sure the question, I'm forming it as we go. Ability of expertise in a connect, and I'll put it this is here in a connected Wikipedia plus Google world. Um, those of you who are on Twitter are probably seeing all sorts of things come out. Um, where people say, I'm not, a, I'm not an epidemiologist, but actually this is my favorite. I can't believe this. I'm not an epidemiologist, but I do viral marketing. And here's what I think the future of the coronavirus will be. And I'm sitting here going, one, viral marketing is a metaphor or possibly a simile. And two, what the hell? But then I caught myself going, well, Maybe this person has something to consider. So we're going to talk about the role of expertise in a connected Wikipedia plus Google world a bit later, but do think about it. Instead, we're going to run to say, here's what's happening. Uh, all of your instructors are trying to design new assessment structures, but there's the academic goals of their courses and there's feasibility. And I've seen that come up a little bit um, as in some of your discussions on Mattermost. So I'll put this out there. If you take on the role of co-designer, not client, not victim, not just basic stakeholder, but co-designer, that's how you're likely to get the preferred outcomes that you want. And going back to what you said earlier, part of being a designer is you know, to say, here's my ideas and why they're good ideas and how they support the stakeholders in play based on your understanding. So if we go back, um, we have this notion of, of stakeholders who may not know how to get past their cognitive biases or functional fixedness. It occurred to me that maybe we should look for con success metrics for a public consultation, which is basically what I've just asked you for. And it turns out there's not a whole lot out there. It's actually appalling. Um, and I dug into this and it says, these are the indicators that this one group of, of people who do public consultations put out there accessibility, whatever that means. Uh, I can think of a couple, diversity of views. There's that broad group of stakeholders, opportunities for participation, but is this taking into account physical, cognitive, psychological access? When I read this, there's very little about the notion that, of, of how those who are consulted feel. You know, do they feel heard? There's all sorts, except possibly with mutual learning and mutual respect. So this notion of feeling heard is really a tricky one that doesn't seem to come up much, let alone good metrics for consultation. Okay, um, let's move on to some, and now we only have 12 minutes, so I might have to do some audibles. Um, there's some really neat stuff here from, um, as, she, as she goes by foot or, although she has a different appellation. And I just wanna zoom in. Um, social isolation, totally agree it sucks. Um, agree that we're trying to find substitutes I'm going to ask a quick question. It's going to be fast, so maybe 30 seconds. Name an organization, like organization, serious scientific research on how to do individual and team functioning in highly isolated circumstances. 30 seconds, go. We're on slide 28 of 53 for those who are following along. All right, calling it. Well, actually not calling it. 
close to calling it because it's already been up three times. Yeah. Let's go see what NASA has to say about social isolation and finding substitutes. So it is NASA Mars mission. Uh, awesome on the Antarctic exploration. I agree. Um, CIA in its own way. I'm not sure about the highly isolated and I have no idea what that even stands for. So there's uh, an astronaut's tips for living in space or anywhere. And we'll zoom in uh, watching the clock. Um, so they did their, their work. They've, I have said, here's the key. Astronauts and psychologists, experts, figured out healthy culture, five general skills, expeditionary behavior. Uh, so again, that notion of we are out seeking. So communication, clear and understood, to listen, to be active, nonverbal cues, which admittedly right now, my nonverbal cue is a green LED. It's kind of weird. Other things, share information and feelings freely. I think you've noticed that in praxis, in, we do speak a little bit more about the us as opposed to just the material. And that's something we're doing because we want you to do the same because there's more to engineering and design than just information. Intentions before action, sharing why you do what you do. And it's a bit of the justification that came up earlier. Personal favorite, use proper terminology. If you mean criterion, say criterion. If you mean measurement system, it's not a metric. Be proper. And always have the discussion when things don't work out as you expect. So communication, this notion of leader and followership, um, their definition is kind of nice. Enhancing the group's ability to execute through positive influence. And the notion of a follower actively contributes to the direction, environment of trust, critical stuff, self-care, healthy psycho psychological, physical, hygiene, go team, managing time, sleep, and so on. Apologies for speed here. Team care. Check on your, on your teammates. How are they doing physiologically, psychologically? College. There's stress, fatigue, sickness, all the stuff we have. Try to work things through, work through those. How group living, how people coordinate, how they come together to achieve their goals, different opinions, different perceptions, resilience in the face of difficulty. So NASA's work is, is less on individual isolation than on team isolation. Um, but if right now you're currently staying with, with family, friends, and others, ask yourself, can I leverage, can we leverage NASA's research so that we get along better with each other? All right. And um, Futor mentions a bunch of things, video calling, uh, group activities. Oh, I should say, um, the NSI themed Cards Against Humanity decks are kind of awesome. Um, the reason behind my obsession with sandals, I assumed it would, you know, the deeply buried wish to make dad proud, although it doesn't really, because my, my dad wasn't really an outdoors person. Um, but this is kind of fun and it, it, it speaks to the culture that you've created. Um, if you could actually launch Professor Brian Wilson, that would be awesome. Um, but you're having fun with it and that's what we're going for. All right, what else we got? Uh, the notion of need for difference. So, I, you know, a lot of good suggestions here that everyone's going to have their own. But let's go with this one. Share your own. Maintain contact. Discord matter most everything. Um, this idea of community. Um, send your memes. Send your videos. Send your stuff. We have been trying to create, and we believe in creating this community. Be in part, you learn from each other, and everything is engineering design, and everything is praxis anyway. So let's see how it plays out. And we've already started this with our Praxis uh, 2021 community, um, starting to get a few more things in there. So please keep sharing design work, other work, your life. Um, that was a bit harsh. This one, I don't even know what it's for, but I think this is the most awesome like thing ever just to be brought together using whatever was at home. Um, Center of Mass Analysis, uh, thank you for the site. Oh yeah, we should, we should, we should mention this. To, this, to the person who posted this, total props for including an explanation and a legend. Good practice. Explain what the heck is going on. Um, now, I thought about, I actually seriously thought about posting this and wasn't sure if it would be well received. Um, I actually, you know, didn't go to McCafe. The McCafe is closed now. It's very sad. Um, or to Tim Hortons, I actually cooked a breakfast scramble. Um, 
And I thought, you know, why, why would I share this? And then I realized I would share this um, because it's engineering and it's design and it's professional practice. And it's this thing called mise en place, um, which some of you may or may not have heard of. And it's this idea that when you're cooking, you arrange your work area just so. And as I see this, there is no difference doing this than having all of the components of your, your ESC 204 robot all laid out when you did your teardown. Your mise en place doesn't just apply when you're cooking. It's like knolling for food. Uh, knolling is actually a thing, as you can see up there. So, um, and no, that's not pineapple, it's potato. Um, so we're going to do a fast one. Uh, Professor Sheridan hopefully can, can throw up a quick poll in a minute. It's totally potato. Um, microwaved in advance to make it a little softer. Um, should we create a discourse thread on NSI cooking? We'll let Professor Sheridan toss that one up if she has a moment um, and we'll get there. Um, but yes, um, or if you're so inclined, you know, you could do this. You could propose that a course on memes is super important. Um, now, now the response that was 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 arrived was, was was sent back is that one does not simply propose a course on memes um, in order to communicate with one's stakeholders, right? Because stakeholder consultation, you use the medium that the stakeholders are used to. If the stakeholders live in memes, then we're doing memes. Now, my response to Professor Chong, because I thought this would be kind of cool. Yes, sure. One does not simply propose a course on memes. N size are not simply ones. So all the way back here, um, the notion, you know, we're trying to figure out how, how research can inform our understanding of getting through this current time. Because practice is about research applied to life. And we're looking for the evidence. Um, but one of the things that's come up a lot is this notion of psychological, that your psychological health is significantly impacted by the sense of control over your situation. And there's a, a something that happens, and, and we've used this in, in past years to discuss, uh, it was linked to the imposter syndrome discussions. We have two and a half minutes, we're getting tight, called learned helplessness. And it's behavior by a subject after enduring repeated adverse stimuli, and the critical part here is beyond their control. And I'd like to point out, don't ever watch the videos of this. It is so, so sad. Do not watch these videos. All right, so the, uh, what's interesting is that the original theory had it backwards. The original theory was when things go, uh, when the environment is, is, is lacking control and people feel a lack of control, um, that their brain changes. It turns out if this is to be believed, I'm gonna look into this. The brain's default state is to assume control is not present and the presence of helpfulness is what's actually learned. I like the fact that in Mattermost, it's all like, let's go watch the videos. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, very quickly, the way it worked was they, they found dogs or they put dogs in harnesses and there were shocks that were being applied to the dogs. Um, group two had shocks at random times. The dog had control. If it pressed the lever, it didn't get shocked. And then here's the interesting part. Group three had a paired group two dog. Group two dog gets shocked. Group three dog shocked, except the lever doesn't stop it. So as far as the group three dog is concerned, there's a random shock with no control. So that's study one. Then they did part two where they could escape. And this was the critical part. The dogs in groups one and two, where they had agency, learned that they could escape. The group three dogs, who had learned that nothing they did had any effect, lay down and lined passively when they were shocked. All right, so I'm, I, this, again, don't, want, it's so sad. Unfortunately, I think many of us actually resonate with this, where we do what we do, we work our, our butts off, we try to get things done and the results come back and we're like, I can't see any relationship between what I did and what happened, and I got 30 seconds, so we're gonna have to do some jumping here. Um, we've experienced this. And in humans, the good is, is it's situational sometimes. And even more importantly, when humans experience this, 
Sometimes it's global, sometimes it's specific, sometimes it's stable, sometimes it's external. And it's navigating how you come to understand why you're feeling helpless that's so important. So the health implications, I think you can it's imagine, are pretty hours. severe. We're going to cut out in a minute. Um, we are currently looking for research on how to overcome learned helplessness. But in the interim, and this is your homework, I'm giving you homework. Yeah, it's 14 hours. Giving you homework. How can you, let's start to partition what's controllable and outside your control. So we'll take this up tomorrow. But we want you as homework, partition what's currently largely under your control from that which is not. We'll take this up tomorrow and move on from there. And I think there's no, is there any other stuff that needs to be looked at super fast? Nope, we're going with that. So you have homework. It's been a great time. Thank you for your chats on Mattermost. And I will catch up with you uh, in whatever medium of choice you have. Actually, I'm, I'm going to add one more. This is currently what I'm monitoring. Twitter, Discord, Discourse, Mattermost, Blackboard, Collaborate. Um, this is nuts. Oh, sometimes Zoom uh, and sometimes Apple iMessage. We need to do better collectively, and we're going to do better as a class as managing our cognitive load. Do your homework. Talk to you later. Take care.